two and lift off hey what's up guys you're watching crypto hustle it's great btc here and today is monday so you guys already know what's up is the internet money show and i'm joined by the one and only edward gonzalez live with us as well edward what do you gotta say i just brought you on yo what up fellas it's your boy edward thanks for having me on the show once again Glad yeah yeah, here yeah. And can't wait to talk to ta with you yeah, man. So there's a couple of things that we're going to talk about now. Some of you guys are watching on Instagram and you're making a big mistake. You should come over to YouTube because it's exactly where the magic is happening. And um, Eddie, one question. Price prediction by the end of the, uh, of the day on Bitcoin. Before... <laughs> For the end of the day on Bitcoin? Yeah, before we even talk about the things we're going to talk about today. Uh, today's range, we could probably see 2195, uh, 21,950. That's a good yeah. downside range. But, you know, let's not rule out a bounce because we could bounce up, I'd say, maybe around 24K. So we can never rule out any possibility. So that's, you're looking about today's ranges. Right on, right on. So, guys, just so that you know, on today, uh, we're going to cover a few things. Number one, we're going to look at the on-chain data of Bitcoin and Ethereum and the market in general, because especially for my investors out there, they, you know, a lot of people feel lost. They're like, oh, where, where, where in the cycle are we in the market and really what's going on on-chain? And looking at the facts, not what, not what people are just screaming about out there, but literally looking at the pure facts. So we're going to look at the on-chain data, then the on-chain data, I mean, the off-chain data, which is technical analysis. Uh, on different markets and the different coins. And then we're going to look at, uh, at altcoins as well, which altcoins are killing it. And they look juicy for the month of uh, August because like I said before, August is going, it's more likely to be a big month on Bitcoin. And what we're doing, what I'm doing here every day is to make sure that we take advantage of it. And I figured out a, a lot of stuff, lots of data that needs to be put in place for you before you make any sort of decision right so it's about time for that crypto hustle you guys you already know what the game is drop your flags drop the like button and destroy the subscribe button if you haven't let's get this video to 1000 likes as always all right and we also going to talk about hex i see a lot of hexicans have been dming me on twitter and screaming at me so I'm going to address that right in this live stream. But if you want to get some juicy altcoins, stick around, watch the live stream till the end. And uh, Edward, I actually have a huge announcement to make here. You might like to hear about this one. Uh, so basically, guess who is our new sponsor? If you guess this one, um, I'll give you 50 bucks in Litecoin. You uh, have Grant Cardone. Sponsor. Wait, how many tries do I get? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Okay, you have Wait. one more option to go. Uh, uh, Mr. Beast. No way, man. It's that would crypto. be fucking killer. Uh, our <laughs> new sponsor is now OKX. OKX. Oh, one of, that was it. Should have guessed it. <laughs> exactly, bro. Like one of the I largest thinking influencers in the somehow. world. CZ, the founder, the founder of Binance, was working at OKX before. So it's an incredible platform, incredible exchange. I have a link down in the description if you guys want to use it go sign up and you get bonus if you sign up with my link why do i share these affiliate links because i know some of the, you guys hate them right but the truth is that if you sign up with my link i make money you make money in this instance you get discount on commission or fees that well, when you're using an exchange you also get a bonus i also get the same bonus that you get so we both make money it's a win-win situation all right now let's get to business immediately uh, Eddie, I will start with looking at the huge macro conditions of uh, of crypto, especially on chain. And I think we can do a split where I go through the on chain data, and then you can go through and do the um, the the off chain stuff. Right? Are you cool with that? Yeah, of course, brother. That works for me. I'm not much of the on chain researcher, anywho. So I've got the TA handled. Right. And for for those of people who don't know. Uh, tell, tell them a little bit about your story, Eddie. How did you get into crypto at all? How did you get into, how did you get involved and how did you get involved with crypto university as well? Because you're, you're sure. Edward is a master technical analyst. You guys, you, you, he don't play, you know, destroy the like button for Edward. Go ahead. 
Well, I don't really want to make it too long, but basically, I mean, I was amateur trading stocks in high school. Uh, I dabbled around in Forex for like, you know, half a second, never really got too serious with Forex. Uh, and I was trading stocks as an amateur in high school. I really actually kind of at one point wanted to get my broker's license so I could, you know, be like the Wolf of Wall Street, like Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio from the movie. But uh, as... I grew up, I had a couple different jobs, and I was actually at this bar one night, crazy, at this bar talking to this guy about Bitcoin, and um, you know, I got more into crypto from there, and I had actually looked back, this is about 2017, like during the run-up, so it was like six months earlier, me and a few friends were talking about Bitcoin, and we had noticed like, oh man, Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin has gone up exponentially, uh, but it had also fallen exponentially, so we were kind of staying away from it. And then I was talking to that guy a little bit later and then come to find out it had already 2x from the last time I looked at it. So I was like, wow, you're telling me whatever I put into Bitcoin, I could have already doubled my money. And I right. didn't really understand much about gold or the U.S. dollar. I didn't understand too much about money and currency. But at the time, I was like, wow, I could have 2x my money. So I got more serious into studying crypto. And a lot of people you know, say that it's easier just to invest in the long run. And that's true. You can make a safe, secure return in Bitcoin just by putting your money into it. And leaving it there. That's abs you're absolutely correct. That's outperformed every hedge fund, every right. fund manager that's ever existed just by simply holding Bitcoin. But there are swings in between all of those massive uh, volatile movements produce high spreads. And you can you can profit off of that. Somebody is profiting off of it every minute of every day. And I wanted to be one of those guys profiting off of it. So studied up. I uh, was able to quit my day job, my real job in october of 2020 oh, oh sorry the, the guy the guys at the uh on instagram are saying we can't hear him it's because we're on youtube live and you guys are watching on instagram so go to youtube <laughs> search crypto hustle and then you'll find the youtube live stream and you can start watching do it right now because we're really going about getting through this stuff okay eddie we can chat more at the end when people are doing a q a and they're asking us questions uh, let's go and get started right now with the technicals. Okay. So this you is my screen it. guys. And right here, I've got a bunch of stuff to show you guys. Number one, number one thing that I want you guys to look at, especially for my investor friends out there who want, uh, who are looking at investing in Bitcoin. They're like, where the hell are we in the market? I'll go into my glass note account and, uh, let me go into my, my dashboard real quick. All right. So if I go back, first, I'll look at Bitcoin and literally what's happening on Bitcoin. OK, so I'll start with the issuance. Right. To investors out there, the people who don't trade, who just buy Bitcoin and, you know, you're like, OK, look, this is a long term investment. We don't want to worry about it. I will look at this again in the future and on and on and on because. You know, it's a it's the best performing asset that is established in the last uh, 12 years. And this is what we're looking at. You can see here the orange color is the Bitcoin issuance. This is new coins being added into the circulating supply. All right. New coins are being created from the beginning of Bitcoin. And you can see it started small. And then as more people started coming into the ecosystem, it grew so much. And obviously, you had a couple of spikes, which means more Bitcoins were being born, being supplied into the world through the process of mining. And then that changed. And you can see every four years, roughly, there is a crisp decline in total uh, Bitcoin issuance, right? The supply is being decreased. So you can see here, four years has been declined. You can It's visually appealing. You can literally see it, okay? It's half, then it's half. Then it's half again. And now in the next four years, especially two years from now, we are looking forward to another issuance uh, situation to happen where Bitcoin is going to have in, uh, in, its, um, in its rate. And that's more likely going to, dis to, to pretty much disrupt and to grow the amount of uh, Bitcoin that's being created. It's going to have in, And this is why the price grows. So you can see from the beginning up to now, the Issuance is decreasing as it goes, but the price is skyrocketing over time. You have up and downs, but overall, this is an upward chart. So if you're an investor, it doesn't matter at which point of Bitcoin you're buying, you still stands for more gains based of this 
uh, historical data and how uh, Bitcoin is designed. Now, let's talk about how many people are in profit because most of the investors like to ask that kind of question. Okay, so everybody invests in Bitcoin, but who really is in profit? So I do have this year uh, the NAPL or the net unrealized profit and loss for Bitcoin. Okay, and what you're looking at in red is capitulation. And what you're looking at when it gets blue is euphoria and greed, which means areas where the price went up tremendously and people have been looking at, um, you know, cashing out or making a lot of money. So basically, if I expand this all the way from the beginning, you can see that right now, the black line is the price of Bitcoin, followed by some areas of uh, different areas. So you can see right now we, we have red capitulation going on at the bottom. However, right now this is starting to change. But it definitely means that a lot of people who bought Bitcoin around this area are no longer in profit. So right now the, the difference between the amount of coins that are into circulation that let's say the UTXOs that are, were created recently, majority of them are underwater, which means that they bought Bitcoin at a higher price than it is now. So this simply just represents the, U the UTXO, which is something that's created when a transaction of Bitcoin is made and a new, basically when a coin move, a new UTXO is uh, created. And then over time, we calculate that. We look at how many UTXO have been created over the period of time. At what point? And then if you subtract that number, uh, the price they were created from the current price, you get the difference. So right now, this gap here is the difference between uh, the price and also the unrealized profit. Not many people are in profit at the moment, which is okay. It fluctuates, as you can see, over time here. But in the longer time horizon, everybody is going to be in the green zone. Another thing that I wanted to show you guys to just put your brains at ease that everything is as it should be uh we're looking at i looked at exchange balances as well i might have to just uh search for this one exchange balance stack exchange balance percent stack okay let's just go to exchange balance all right so this is the price of bitcoin and this is the exchange balance so exchange balance simply means binance coinbase and all these other guys how much coin do they have in their wallets? And you can see that number has been declining, really. It's very obvious here. Their number have been decreasing, declining because many people are taking their funds out of the exchanges. Another thing that I also want to show you guys what we can learn from this data set is that you can see that there is correlation between the price whenever the, the, um, the total locked value in exchanges is above the price of Bitcoin itself on this chart. Maybe this is a sign of a decline to come in the market in terms of asset prices, because this is what's happening right now. I had another chart here um, that's related to that. Let me see if I can find it. I probably screwed it up again, but I had a very good chart. That's really a good representation of what I was saying here. Uh, but anyway, to finish off on the Bitcoin situation, uh, another thing that I wanted to show you guys about it uh, is the mining difficulty as well. So mining difficulty simply means how difficult or expensive it is to create a Bitcoin. How much does it cost really to create uh, a Bitcoin and put it into circulation? Now, the good situation is when this yellow line, the squiggly yellow line or orange line is below the black because it means that it costs less to create a Bitcoin, however, the Bitcoin is worth a lot more. But you can see here recently, if I highlight this area, there was a crisscross here at which the, the, the cost of creating a new Bitcoin was above the price itself, which happened recently. And now we can see that it's trying to correct itself because we don't want that kind of situation at all because it disincentivizes miners. And a lot of miners will start leaving the Bitcoin network, which would end up making it less secure. So I am confident that the market will pump because we this is not a usual. You can look at the entire data set here, the chart. You can see that the norm is literally to see Bitcoin being uh, the price being above the mining difficulty. So I think we have to see 
um, a discoloration between those two, the price got to go up and stay properly above the mining difficulty, which it is right now, but we need to see a larger gap. So for those of you who are thinking about why am I saying that August and forward might be a good time for Bitcoin, I'm looking at all these things. And also I looked at stable coins. So where is my stable coin chart? Okay, I looked at stable coins. Okay, where is that? Is the stable coin? Okay, stable coins, stable coins. I had a comparison for stable coins somewhere. Okay, I don't know where I left that chart, but I literally prepared for it. What the hell is going on? Uh, workbench, my charts, stables. Yeah, there we go, man. I thought I knew I wasn't this stupid. Here we go. So you can see here also something very interesting because if we keep ignoring stable coins, then we're missing the point, guys. All right. So this, what's going on here, I have three major stable coins starting from Binance USD in gray and I have USDT in pink and USDC in green. So there have been a lot of FUD over the years. For those of you who are new to Bitcoin, a lot of people have been doubting USDT if it really have the funds that it claims to have under its balance sheet. So what has happened, people have now uh, have now looked uh, have now looked deep into uh, the stablecoin. And you can see that a lot of people are losing trust in USDC. And you can see, I mean, USDT. USDT has been in decline massively in its market cap that USDC has now taken over. And this is a flippening of USDT. USDT is below USDC. It is also below Binance USD. Imagine, guys, unbelievable, right? Whoever thought that this situation would happen and now we're looking at it. If you're watching on Instagram, again, if you want to look at my charts and my technicals, come over to YouTube. Destroy the like button, guys. Let's bring the horns. Let's bring the horns. Woo! <laughs> okay, so lastly, uh, before I get into Ethereum, I'll, uh, I'll give a shout out to our sponsors before we continue. Uh, but Eddie, looking at what I just showed you now, what do you think about the market direction? Is it giving you confidence or is it, is it getting you worried? As far as worry goes, I'm not concerned in the long run for Bitcoin, but on the immediate, uh, you know, in the next few days to come, I am going to try and take some action to make sure I can capitalize on the movements ahead. But no, it doesn't uh, deter me from my ideas or anything. It's good All right. information. All right. And uh, I mean, but do you think any of this uh, would give an investor any confidence or most people just don't care? Uh, perhaps someone who was looking into purchasing this asset over the next five to ten years or possibly decades, yeah, that's real inviting. I would, I would like to try to buy at a time where conditions paint the, the Ill picture that price is pretty low for Bitcoin right now. So, not a bad time. All right. So I will go ahead and do another um, TA on um, technicals on Ethereum and the entire chain and what's going on because Ethereum 2.0 is on the rise and there are certain plays that you can make to make money on Ethereum and its surrounding. But quick, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, which is OKX. Discover crypto built on top of the world's most powerful exchange. There is NFTs, there is cryptocurrency trading, there's derivatives, there is uh, there's leverage trading, there's um, staking, there is DeFi, everything. So this is an incredible exchange that I use myself and I've known and I've used it for years as well. Like I always tell you guys, I do not use one platform. I use many of them. Okay, and OKX is definitely one of those exchanges. So a link is in the description. Use my link. You get the benefits. I get my referral commission as well. You get your sign up commission because you use my link. Everybody wins. If you want to use the referral code is crypto hustle. It's really that simple. Now, Eddie, you can take it on and give them some of your juicy technicals on Bitcoin. And then I'll switch over again and come back to the on-chain stuff. Let's go. Sweet deal. You got my screen up there. Ready to go? Yes, sir. All right, so our chart hasn't changed a whole lot since last week's episode. If you haven't watched it, you can go back and review it. And if you're not keeping up, you need to make sure you have your notifications on 
that way you get alerts when we go live and you don't have to backtrack every single episode so we talked a little bit last week about oh the by, by the way by, by the way i have someone here talking about hex guys so i'll talk about hex at the end don't worry i got you <laughs> <laughs> hex you can okay go so ahead, we Jay. looked at the general market structure last week and we identified that we were in a downtrend by a series of lower highs and lower lows Zooming into the immediate price action here, we're going to be looking at the daily time frame. So what's notable here is we haven't been able to break a bear flag. So I've got a chart pattern here to show you. We also had a bear flag right here and a bear flag right here for reference. So you can see as price enters from the top, we're looking for a break on the downside. Now, what's interesting, when we get to Ethereum, we'll show you how this example doesn't always work out. But here in Bitcoin, we can see that we are still within that range. And we're actually heading back down towards the bottom. So it's possible we could look for support when Gray asked at the beginning of the stream where I think we could see today's price range. We could probably tap along here for support and maybe possibly even along this lower range before a break to the downside. So we need to be cautious of that and we need to be cautious for resistance along this. If for whatever reason Bitcoin decides to turn around right now, we need to be cautious of that point. Now, one more interesting technical that we're going to take a look at here is from our EMA cross. Of course, our EMA trading indicator has a red line, so it's not telling us to go long. These are not mm -hmm. suitable long conditions. But right here, we can see that there's been some rejection around the 50 EMA. And price is now trying to trade under that level. So when price is trading over that level, we could look to long it to the next moving average, or in this case, exponential moving average. But right now, we have to see if price is going to start trading underneath those levels or continue to trade above them. And that will give us a little more insight as to how much momentum we have for upside or downside potential. Yeah, go ahead, Thank Eddie. For the <laughs> I was making sure. That I, I love that soundboard you got there. Exactly, bro. Striking the horn. So just a few more technicals right here. We don't have a strong divergence for Bitcoin. We do have some notable divergence here, as we can see this point. Now let's take a look at the RSI value right here, this little purple number. When I put the cursor here, we can see it's 61.46, which is a high based off close values. And then we have 61.05. Oh, but, but do, so, do you think, uh, Eddie, do, do you think today was a good opening for the market, even though crypto th doesn't close, but at the, from a traditional perspective? Do you think today was a, is a good open for Bitcoin that we are at this point or how would you put it? And uh, wh how does it signify what's more likely to happen over the week? Well, I think really what's more important is a candle close. I mean, we can't really control when the candlesticks open or close, but when candles close above certain levels, it shows if there's strength going in another direction. So if mm -hmm. we have a candlestick, for example, close below the support line, it, it could signal that price is trying to move in a lower direction. But if price of this candlestick, for whatever reason, closes higher than it opened, then that's a sign that maybe the bulls want to try and bring the market back into their into their court. You know, into but look, favorite, so if, 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 if this is a daily, then we're looking at four days of pure open, uh, low open and close, right? Like lower lows. Yeah, this would be the if this closes four days in a row, but it has uh it has opened every day lower than it, it closed the previous. Right. So the last four days, Bitcoin here. has been has been in a decline, right? Basically. Yeah, we could see here. Basically, it uh, it opened right here and pushed down. So it opened lower and then pushed down. It opened here, which is lower than the previous days open, and then it opened here, pushed up a little bit, and now it's uh, pushing back down towards the bottom. All right. All right. Awesome. So before we move into Ethereum uh, and other and the on the altcoins talk, because I have some altcoins that I'm really paying my attention to. And I also just want to share my altcoin strategy moving forward in August because I'm still bullish on it. Uh, I will go into the on-chain stuff as well, but I, I'm waiting for you guys to destroy the like, like button right now. Do it. <laughs> Do it right now. Destroy the freaking like button, guys. Okay. Anyway, so I'll move over and I'll go ahead and look at the Ethereum technical. So where, am I, where are my notes again? Okay, I'm trying to be organized today. So on Ethereum, right, for, I mean, we have to talk about this because a lot of people are so concerned about, um, you know, ETH 2.0 and, and, and what, what it might change. So I'll make this clear. You have heard that so many people are talking about ETH 2.0 is going to lower fees on Ethereum. 
that is absolutely not not true at all uh it's it's mess it's mostly people who you know don't really understand the technicals of how the blockchain works the ethereum is designed and the coin also the tokenom uh, the tokenomics of ethereum there is no way ethereum it can be deflationary so there is i think a burn of uh i think 11 percent of the last last issue ones have been burned but still you know it doesn't really affect it much of the fee structure on ethereum right so anyway looking at the total value locked which is how we you know partly how we value ethereum what you're looking at guys here in blue is the amount uh, i think you can mute for a little bit eddie because there's some um, audio coming from your side cool so in blue guys you're looking at the amount of total value locked in ethereum the black is the price of ethereum so we wh why is this total value locked this is what happens when you deposit your funds into a uh, into Aave or Compound in DeFi protocols, right? For DeFi, people want to earn yield and they take money, they put it onto, onto the Ethereum blockchain looking for yield. And you can see here recently, there have been a massive decline which was correlated with the price. In which at the beginning, there was a pure correlation here between also uh, price going up and the total value locked going in up and up and up even though the price actually started it but this was due to, to the beginning of DeFi in 2020 all the way to 2022 and then we started seeing a decline now there's a massive decline here around may and this is re related to the uh the luna crash when luna happened even though it was happening on its own chain uh a lot of people you know felt uncomfortable with their funds being on these protocols and platforms and they started withdrawing from the DeFi plays and that's what we have seen so that also led to ethereum price going down and as you can see there is definitely a direct correlation between the two because at the very end of the stick you can see that as the market is consolidating and starting to go up the confidence in the market in total value lock itself is also kind of increasing which is really cool to see uh, and now let's look at the gas usage on Ethereum as well. Okay, so this is the gas usage. Why is this important to look at? Gas is one of the most important elements of Ethereum and you want to pay attention to where is it going because if you want to follow the money, you have to pay attention on each blockchain where the amount of value is being directed, especially on Ethereum. It's almost like if people are willing to spend too much fees on it, it means that there is money to be made or a lot of economic activity. So uh, the different colors represent different segments of Ethereum or category. And at the top here, you can see that at the very top, it's MEV bots. MEV bots are consuming or are pretty much a lot of fees are being generated from, e th from Ethereum, from the uh, M uh, MEVs. So these are bots. And when people talk about bots, what do they mean? They mean mineable extractable value on, on the chart. It means that this is things that bots can do. For example, um, overriding transactions or front running certain transactions to make sure that they can make money by overbidding someone so that they can get some NFT before you get it, all that stuff. There's a lot of bots on Ethereum because you know it's a programmable blockchain. And to follow right now, not much has really changed. The second one is NFTs. So you might think that NFTs are dead, but NFTs are still active. Now, you might ask, oh, not many people know about NFTs. Why uh, is it so high that it's second to MEV? The reason is majority of NFTs are still being traded on chain. They're not on exchanges. Exchanges haven't figured out an effective way to make money on NFTs and centralize it. Binance tried, they failed miserably. OKX tried, they failed miserably. Most people, they're doing this with MetaMask and that's why you're looking at all the, the fees being accumulated from it. And then you've got Bridges, third, and you've got DeFi, then ERC20 tokens. The ERC20 tokens are not, by the way, it's a subtraction from um, stablecoins are categorized differently here or separately. And then you're followed by uh, stablecoins and then Vanilla. Vanilla are transactions on Ethereum that are pure ETH transaction of me sending you an Ethereum. It's, that is considered a vanilla transaction. And then others are making about uh, 39 billion, which is insane, 
okay so you can see other is massive and then going up and up until mev with a uh, 2.6 billion all right guys so that's pretty much it um another thing that i can share on eth is what what did i also wanted to share on eth i think these are the main ones and then we can move into altcoins as well yo destroy the like button guys if you're enjoying the live stream uh and otherwise i will not share a surprise altcoin that i have to share with you so destroy the like button there you go eddie take it on <laughs> All right, yeah, you heard the man. Destroy the like button if you want the if you want the sauce. If you want the sauce, man. If oh, is Eddie, down. Can, can, can you talk? Can you talk about the um the flash sale on the indicators? A lot of people are still asking me about it. Oh, our flash sale, man. We uh, we had that. We had a countdown timer. It was live last Friday for twenty four hours, a little longer because our devs didn't take it down. Um, I don't even. I can check the website and see if it's still up. I haven't really checked, but yeah, I, th I think we don't it's have any up. more flash sales in, uh, scheduled for a while. But if it's still up, you can better go take advantage of it before the dev team wakes up. <laughs> yeah, it looks like uh, we're back to full price. So if you missed out on this one, you better keep your eyes peeled and notification alerts on so you don't miss out next time. Because half off, that was a steal, honestly. It's actually not full price because there is still like a, a discount going on, a massive one, if, especially if you buy the package with all the indicators, Nitrous Boo, the EMA, and um, the strategy as well. Let me just uh, see if I can go to the website and show them. It looks like we yeah. have a discount on the master package. On the master package, yeah, let's see. Okay, so here we go. I'm looking for my screen. Here we go. So... I went to, I'm using a wrong screen and then I'm looking at the wrong screen. What's the problem? Okay, here we go. So these are the indicators. You can check them out. And you can see that the ultimate indicator package has four indicators in one package. It's $500. You buy this guy, simplify your trading life. You'll make money. Everybody makes money easy. You just have to follow the signals and the indicators. You can mix them. You can use one at a time. You can use different strategies to experiment with which one works for you. It's on and on and on. So take advantage of this. You can also buy each one uh, uh, at a time. Like you, if you just want one of them, not everything, go check it out. They all have demos that explain how they work. And, um, you know, this, especially the package, will go back up to 700. So make sure you go and grab it. Okay, if you really want to take your trading seriously, uh, I think using these indicators will help you because for me, that's how I trade to simplify my trading. And I also automated some of the strategies with three commas and stuff like that. Anyway, move, moving on, let's jump into the altcoins game and then I can talk about Hex because I know a lot of Hexicans are here. They want to hear what I say about Hex. They're DMing me on, on Twitter. So we can get to that at the end. But for now, uh, Eddie, let's get to your, to your art coins and I'll jump on mine as well. Sure thing, man. Uh, we'll take a quick look at Ethereum. So I want to talk about RSI divergence really quickly. So if you don't know what RSI divergence is, this is just a quick cheat sheet. We're not going to review each one here. I'm just going to point out the one that is important to us. So I'll move it to the side here. And you can take a screenshot of that if you want to come back to it. But we're going to be looking at this oh, bearish. Just throw, just throw it in the in the Discord server as well for those who want it, actually. 115. We'll drop it in the Discord server as well in the Crypto University. So here we can see the RSI divergence. This is sloping down, creating a lower high. While here on the candlesticks, we have a higher high. So from this candlestick, it was indicative that price could push down at some point. We needed to see a couple candlesticks close below this line because when we have divergence, it's possible that we could have a double or triple top on the dynamic divergence. So price could have come back up here before it rejected far to the downside. Now, while we're looking for this push, what we're going to measure here is from candle to candle. And that's about a 10% over nine days. So we're going to be looking to measure this for nine days and about 10%. So you see, we've already filled just about a 10% range. And if we're following out till the ninth day, that's actually 10 there. Then it'll pull back somewhere into August 6th. So that's where we're going to be looking for the expiration of the divergence. But just because it expires doesn't mean price cannot push further down. We're going to look for the support check here. Price broke over this bear flag. Remember how we were earlier looking at this bear flag pattern too. Normally what we're looking for is downwards continuation. 
in this instance, it broke above and was able to find support above. So if price breaks down below this support line, that's your next layer of support. And we also have not a bearish cross here. It looks like it's going to be forming one soon, but we cannot trade based upon what is going to happen because the MACD is a reflection. All the indicators are a reflection of the price action. So let's not speculate on what the indicators tell us beforehand. We have to actually interpret the data that is given to us. So when we see a bearish cross, that's just going to give me a little bit more confidence in chasing this short trade down past these levels. But we need to wait to observe that first on the daily, and then we can maybe target something on the smaller time frame. But ultimately, if that doesn't hold for support down here, we're looking back to swing low around 887. And I would hope that Ethereum doesn't fall much further below that. But, you know, in these conditions, nothing is certain right now, especially not, these are not, I know we've had a nice bullish push in the last few weeks, but this is not a bull market and we do not need to FOMO in our entire life savings right now. Let's be a little strategic right. on this. Straight up, straight up. So let me just uh, head into here. Bam, bam, also... bam, bam, bam. Oh man, how can I forget? <laughs> Yeah, destroy the like button, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna <laughs> jump I jump in here with my chart as well, and uh, show you guys. I I did give a trade about optimism last week, and this is I'm still really bullish on this uh, on this coin. It's new, and the chart itself it's uh, forming a U shape and all that, looking really good. And I really I I drew this rectangle here, and I mentioned that hey guys. We have to wait for it to go above the red zone before it goes up. So I opened two trades. One was a spot position where I just bought. And then I opened on, on now I open a, a derivatives trade with leverage, with 10x leverage. And on that one, I, I well, I put an order, but I didn't execute the trade because I was waiting for a close in candlestick. Because when I was opening the trade, it was somewhere around the top. And as you can see, I want it to go above this line. What's going on with my brush? I'm using an airbrush, a highlighter. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about here, right? So you can say that, ah, but look, the candle went on the area where you should be buying, but then now it went down. How can you protect yourself from this? What you want, guys, is a breakout. You don't want this, okay? What you want is for you to see if something like this, where... You have seen a candle green going up a certain limit, and then you have a confirmation by another candle that is also green. So, you know, open low, close high as well. So you want this kind of trade, right? Whereas here you have so many weeks that are just testing the area and breaking out, but they haven't closed above. So if anything you're going to do, because we're still bearish overall, you know, in all financial markets. But if you want to take advantage of the market, make sure that any trade that you make, you find confirmation. You have indicators to help you. You have, for example, right now you can see the EMA is showing you orange, which is hey, be careful. We might go into raid, and then Nitrous Bull has already called it raid bearish. However, this candle hasn't closed yet, so you know you never know. It might flip around before it closes, but it has a couple of hours to go. Uh, I think it is one hour five minutes from what I can see now to close on the four hour. So you have to make sure that you find your breakouts before you make any moves. Another altcoin that I'm looking at is uniswap now you can see that the market formation here in the structure looking really testy it has broken out of this um downtrend that it has been and we have been we have seen nothing other than the uh higher highs and lower lows and a little bit of consolidation here right and lower highs by the way so you can see here here and here as well for the first time we might see it maybe retest and revisit this range of consolidation which i think is more likely to happen so i've put in some buy orders here at spot but i've also put in a short position below it just in case it happens we could end up revisiting this low levels if the market let's say if we we see a shock to the market we could see another capitulation to the market which we don't want but we might as well just prepare for it and another thing that i'm looking at is still wi-fi which i told you guys about it last week as well Wi-Fi USDT. So obviously all of these are fed on the nose dive right now. But if you look at the charts and the form and the structure and the volumes, both these coins are looking good. They're seeing massive accumulation levels in the volume, 
which means when the market turns on a good green day, everything else is going to look good. And by the way, Wi-Fi is still pumping, right? I told you guys about about it a few days ago, and we're still good on Wi-Fi, $11,500. And if you go a little bit back on the 27th, it was at 6690 on the 27th. And now it's standing at $11,000. So, yo, I made you some money if you took me on this trade. Straight up, straight up, Wi-Fi already winning. Still, we had experienced a red candle only yesterday, guys. Okay? Subscribe twice just for that one, guys, because it's a win. That's what we're all about. So when I talk about the market being really in a good uh, in a good mo momentum that, you know, August might be a good month. This is what I'm talking about. So from that moment on, we went as high as 115% and we ended up now, we're sitting at 75% profit since last week, depending on which, which days you bought it at. Okay. So that's pretty much the play guys. Everything looking really good. And we just have, have to hope for Bitcoin to stay put and stay up. Uh, you have any other outs you want to share about, Eddie, before I reveal one special coin I want to talk about? You're muted, sir. Yeah, I got two alt ideas we could take a look at, if you don't mind. Let's I'll do it. i really quickly. All right, so here on Theta Token, I'll just go ahead and hide this larger structure really quick. Our top two trend lines, we can see we have a downtrending channel. Now, normally... What you want to do in a channel until it breaks is try and find your short opportunities from the top. So we'll put this line here. Yo, along here, let, the let me just put it in perspective. Just overreach here is screaming about how much money he made on Wi Fi. Bro, we talked about Wi Fi last Monday <laughs> before this whole play. <laughs> so don't worry, we got you. We got everybody here. This is the most profitable YouTube channel on the freaking internet. Destroy the like button, guys. Homeboy made a bunch of money off Wi Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, he made some money off of Wi-Fi as well. So everybody who watched la la last week definitely made some money. So shout out to you guys. Hell yeah. Uh, that's well, what, continuing that's what in on Theta really quick. And uh, by the way, okay, continue. I'll show them right now how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so Gray likes to call out. Uh, he's really good at predicting pumps. Me, on the other hand, I like to try and be as technical as possible and gamble off of uh, things that I've seen before in the past. So... Whenever we look to see this break, if it breaks to the upside, you want to wait for a retest to try and long out of the channel. But as long as it's inside the channel, you want to try and take shorts from here and longs from the bottom. Putting those lines back on, we can see, interestingly enough, if we zoom out a bit, this is the 1H time frame. So earlier at Bitcoin, we were looking at the larger picture on the daily. Here on uh, Theta, we're looking at a potential trade setup. So we also have a rising wedge here. Now, if the rising wedge is respected and breaks out right here, it would also respect the downturn channel, and we can target into this region for a short, potentially back to this support level, if this support level doesn't hold. But, of course, if it respects the structure here, then it's going to break out of that channel, look for a retest somewhere in this point. So we're looking for that breakout here, retest up, or push down, breakout from this, and push to the downside so right here is an area of interest and we just need to keep an eye on theta because we're going to have something happening here really soon and you can take whichever direction it goes and yeah, yes. uh, before i show matic i'll let gracie if he wants to pump something off there no 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 go ahead go ahead go ahead with matic sweet deal so matic is another one where we're seeing some pretty hardcore divergence here and what's interesting about matic <laughs> is we have pumped 222% over the past few days. So this is 43 days. So in the past 43 days, it's up 222%. That's a massive run up. In the last 30 days, it's up over about 100%. So we are going to be looking for a short opportunity on this. And I know everyone wants to, hey, what's the next point that, uh, coin that's going to 10,000x? When is the next coin we can put all our money into and wake up rich? Guys, you can make money on the shorts too. And it's, it's a lot easier. I'm not going to say it's you just wake up and do it, but it's a lot easier to predict a short than it is a pump. We already have a lot of information after something is pumped in order to predict a short opportunity. So we're going to keep a close eye on Matic in the days coming and try and target back towards this upward support line, maybe into this support zone. And that's what we're going to be looking for there. Right on. So just to respond to a comment on Twitter, on Instagram, somebody says, why do they charge more fees? 
uh, why do they charge more when you sell? Like, where, uh, Tepi, where are you trading your coins? On what platform, what exchange? Uh, this is why I recommend you use big exchanges because I can guess that you're probably using Luna or Coinbase and those ones are expensive, man. They're like, uh, they're on ramps. So avoid using them. You have to move your funds from Luna or Coinbase over to Bybit, OKX, FTX. Link I already have in the description. So to make it simple for you, move your funds over to OKX because they sponsor this show and their cool exchange. And you trade with basically almost zero fees. It's, it's really cheap. So that's all you got to do. So for those of you guys who are like, oh, how do I, when I'm making these calls, where do I share them? I will show you the, uh, let me show them the, the Discord server, how it looks like and how they can take advantage. Okay. So all you got to do, guys, is this. Um... So I do share most of the calls or Edward, pretty much our active, tr our serious traders who are serious with trading, they're in our private group and they like to share all the, the stuff in there. So I'm just going to share here quickly uh, something specific. Discord. Exactly. Hey, you can put up our events board too and let them know all the events we got going on right there. It's at the top. <laughs> uh, look, we can tell them everything. So from you guys, we got courses, we got the groups, we got events. If you want to grab a course to learn how to trade for myself and Edward, make sure you go and do it. CryptoUniversity.network is the place to do it. And this is our Discord channel, what you're looking at right now. And you can see people are trading here. They're sharing charts and whatever. All these calls that I'm talking about, Wi-Fi and stuff, I shared it in here. Look, these are people who have learned how to trade from Crypto University, and now they're doing it every day. All right? Serious traders. So if you want to be part of this group, either you get into our courses or you get into our indicators, and it automatically qualifies you to be in any of the private groups. So make sure you check it out. Uh, if you want to know how to get to the website, how do you actually get there? This is how you do it. You go to CryptoUniversity.network. This is the website. You can search it. If you search Crypto University on Google, we are number one on Google because we are the number one. All right. And right here is all our courses, uh, coaching. You've got free training as well if you want any of that and so on and so forth. We're awesome, guys. Okay. We're winning. So join, join the most profitable crypto community in the world to never miss out on anything. NFTs, crypto and so on and so forth. All right. Moving on, Eddie, you have uh, other coins to share or we can go into a Q&A? Uh, those are the two I'm looking out for. I mean, of course, outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum, I mainly keep an eye on Bitcoin, but those are some opportunities I'm looking for. I want to try and get in on Theta's break and I'm looking for uh, short opportunities on Matic. I want to catch that wave back down. Okay, guys, let's let's get on with a um, with a Q and A before we close. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Myself and Eddie will answer them nicely. Um, and also at the same time, I want to share something. So, this is the last altcoin for tonight that I can talk about. Before, I mean, cult obviously, cult, cult DAO. Make sure you're paying attention to that. It's not financial advice. It's a risky coin. But this one is brewing up so strongly, guys. The, the belief and the, the strength of community on DAO is next to nothing. It's literally the number one cult-ish coin on the internet. You look at Elon Musk's tweet. You look at Vitalik tweet. If you look at all those tweets, you see people talking about DAO, DAO. They're putting all these masks on. So this is how an, a meme coin or a phenomenon is, is born. So I'm not saying that cult is a meme coin. It's a DAO. But I'm saying that popular coins like Shiba Inu and Dogecoin, this is how they become popular. So I'm looking at that trend. I'm like, oh, wow. If this guy, these guys keep consistent with what they're doing, uh, we might see a big, huge pump on DAO. So I'm still bullish on it. Another coin is BitDAO. BitDAO, it went all the way down to 50 cents. And uh, I think a few days ago, two or three days ago, it went back to 76 cents again. And now I think it's retracing again a little bit. And it's a good pick, especially in August, if August is going to be massive bullish. All right, Eddie. Um, okay, lastly, let's talk about, do you know anything about Hex? Edward? Uh, do I know anything about Hex? Hex, yes. Uh, no, sir. I've never read the white page. I know it's an altcoin. That's about as far as uh, my knowledge goes on it. <laughs> 
Bro, I can tell you about it. So Hex is this coin that was created by um, it was created by a guy called Richard Hart. Okay. So Richard Hart is a smart guy, very very smart. He's you know he understands a lot of stuff, technical. But he also understands that people are stupid. So he does these things where <laughs> it's funny, right? So he is like a living me. It's almost like he stands in front of you and tell you that, yo, I know that you're stupid and this is what you want. I'm just going to do that to make you believe. So if you go on his Twitter account, he blocked me. But if you go on his Twitter account, he says, uh, I own the most expensive. Uh, he says, I own the most expensive. What? Let me just check. It. Let me just read it. Look at the facts instead of paraphrasing everything. Okay, I'll find it now. Richard Hart. So on his Twitter account, he says, I own the world's largest diamond, quickest Ferrari and most expensive Rolex ever made. I raised, <laughs> 20 <laughs> I raised $27 million for charity. I make people rich, free coins soon. So he literally just um, did an airdrop on Bitcoin holders where you could claim your hex and that he has pumped this coin by doing controversial shit. And doing things that are obvious that people like, like having expensive cars, jewelry, and all that stuff. And then, you know, he gets the results. But then he, what's funny about it to me is that he doesn't hide it. He literally tell you that oh, I, I make myself look ridiculous for a, uh, for a reason. It's like he, he's wearing Gucci and all this other fancy designer, like overtly, you know. So he created this coin called um, uh, Hex. And then he claims that it's better than Bitcoin. So just Im imagine the, the claims. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Ethereum. And he claims that, oh, it's better than Bitcoin. And it's going to make people rich. And it makes it, it went up, you know, thousands of times percent. And Bitcoin, you know, it has reached the height of its S-curve. He makes like really ridiculous claims and attack every single coin. And then <laughs> he still managed to get people who believe in it. So he, he has created this kind of a cult thing going on. So if you attack uh, Hex, you really get attacked by the Hexicans, which are the holders of the Hex coin. So <laughs> I made a video saying that Hex is a scam, and these guys are in my DMs every day screaming at me. So hey, guys, uh, I respect Richard Hart. He's a smart guy. He's playing pretty much um, social engineering, and it's working. But for you guys who follow him blindly and not seeing what he's doing, then I feel sorry for you, okay? <laughs> and, it, and, and look... Just because you're making money from it or you make money still doesn't mean that it's a right project. So these guys, they have they are lo locked their hex for 15 years. Imagine a staking wow. contract where you lock it up for 15 years, up to 15 years. Or you can lock it for three years, whatever. But even the people in Luna and Anchor were making money, right? It was like real 15% APY. And it all got decimated. There was this thing called uh, BitConnect. If you guys remember, some of these guys are just getting started with crypto, so I understand it. There was um, Bitcoin Vote and all the other crap like that. They all went away. So just because you're making money doesn't mean that it's right. You just have to make sure you're in it for the right time and you make your money and you exit. But I can tell you, fundamentally, Hex has no utility. So it just doesn't make sense. It's not going to be a store of value and it has a CEO. Richard Hart, who goes around the world and promote it. Bitcoin has no CEO. You can't compare the two. Bam, 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 bam. That's, that's the one. <laughs> that's the biggest part right there. How did I even forget? <laughs> yeah, man. Destroy the freaking like button, guys, if you're enjoying the show. Eddie, you have any closing notes before we close? But I think we have had a, uh, an incredible time on the live stream. Shout out to everybody who joined us. Destroy the like button. And I actually have to tell them, uh, reminder, I had an incredible podcast with Da Vinci. Have you watched it, Eddie? Oh, no, I saw the thumbnail the other day, but I mean, you got me working so hard. You know, I don't have that much free time to watch podcasts. <laughs> Bro, it's incredible. It's insane. So I talked with Da Vinci. We talked about uh, everything to do with, let me just find it. Um, he talked about being, you know, life as a, being a millionaire and how people treat him different, like, you know, women and his lifestyle in, in Dubai. 
And he talked pretty much about everything, how he got started, um, his life, and about taxes, having multiple passports. We covered everything. So if you haven't watched it, I think it must be something you must do right now after watching this. Go to Survival Skills Podcast, right? And go watch this episode. You're going to thank me later. If you don't know who Da Vinci is, he's the guy who is telling the world to buy Bitcoin at $1. He has a video that was popular like uh, years ago. Uh, in 2014, 2015, he was pleading to people, just buy $1 worth of Bitcoin, please. He's a true G, so I did a podcast with him on Survival Skills Podcast. Go there, watch it. When this channel gets to 10,000 subscribers, I will give a free trip to Dubai to a lucky winner. To one lucky winner is going to win an entire trip to Dubai. So make sure you guys check it out. It's an incredible episode. Oh, that's an incredible giveaway. You're giving away a trip to Dubai. Three days to a like a winner, and they will be able to choose who they want to go there with. So if you have a like for you, you have a girlfriend, right? Or she left you because crypto crypto dumped. <laughs> well, I have a girlfriend, but I would rather take my mom if I were the winner. Oh man. <laughs> I hope I hope she doesn't watch this. <laughs> Oh, she would understand, man. My mom, my mom needs to get out and see the world. You know, that'd be awesome. And I hope that all you young boys and men at home would also do something nice for your mother. <laughs> exactly. But look, man, on, on the on the next bull run, you're going to be able to take them both out forever. You can literally just travel forever. You know, crypto allows you to do that. Like for me, that's what it did. It's like I just travel infinitely now of the gains that I've had through investing in Bitcoin early. Like nothing special really, bro. Buy some good coins, chill, seed on them, and then it works out. But a lot of these guys, uh, I was looking at the data on Glassnode where, you know, dormant coins are the ones that we consider if you buy and you leave them in a wallet for six months and they don't move, those are considered dormant coins and we put them in the HODL range or category. Now, majority of the people who bought in the last few months or even at the top, they didn't even uh, spend s six months holding those coins. Whenever they saw a move, they got fear and then they sold them immediately, right? So that is the difference, guys. You buy good stuff, you hold it. It's really simple math, literally. Just buy, sit on it and wait for the time to happen. I showed you at the beginning of the, on the last stream the data of the issuance distribution on Bitcoin. Issuance getting lower, price only going up over time. And that's not going to change at all. All right. Uh, I see someone here says share the link to subscribe. Go to YouTube or just click my link in bio if you're watching on Instagram. All my links are on there. You'll be able to find everything. All right, Eddie, I'm done. What do you got to say before we close? What's happening this week at Crypto University? What's the schedule? Uh, this week. So tomorrow we're having our first ever it's going to be a monthly btc meetup and we're just going to go ahead and get some of the top traders from discord really anyone's welcome to share their idea and we're going to try and pass our ideas back and forth to see if we can decide what direction bitcoin might be going for the next month so that is an important meeting we're having tomorrow wednesday we got crypto and chill we're just going to come out bullshit about the market talk about whatever we want to talk about as long as it's crypto related we have a group trading session on Thursday. So we're going to be printing money in the discord Thursday. And yeah, that's all we got for this week. <laughs> next awesome. week, we got some more events going on as well. But we can talk about that next week. And we also have investors meeting, which is my event where I'll be meeting all the crypto university students, investors and really go deep in investment and how you actually do it and some of the things that I'm implementing. At the same time, I will be in South Africa on the 13th uh, in Johannesburg with podcast and chill crypto and chill with mcg we're going to be discussing crypto and all the fun stuff so you guys if you're in sa it's free make sure you pull up we see each other in person and talk things out and have fun all right otherwise thank you guys for watching we'll see you uh this show comes to you every monday at 7 p.m london or uk time because i'm in the uk at the moment uh which is gmt plus one yeah yeah, it's GMT plus one. So GMT plus one, London time every Monday is the Internet Money Show. Make sure you guys are joining in and destroy the like button and subscribe. See you on the moon, guys. Peace out. Big deuces. Out. Oh, an hour exactly, bro. We, ki we killed it. We off by like 26 seconds.